Namaste, I am Pradesh Nisodari. And I am Simran Sethya. We are from Class 12. And we are here to present our model about our surveillance. As you all know, what the Bureau faces annually. So it's a very common problem that is the water logging issues. So, uh, and we are also aware of the situations and the, uh, the people faces over a very long period of time. So to tackle these problems, we have come up with a plan to, and we are trying to depict the plan of solving this water logging issue. The, this model shows how we can tackle the problem and also how we can use the water in a sustainable way, in a sustainable way for future use. So this model is made with a vision of conserving the wastewater and then using it for uh, generating hydroelectricity and also how we can use that process water for a sustainable and the better use. The working principle of our model, it all starts with collecting the rainwater and the longwater from the streets into the drain then collecting it in an underground tank. This underground tank will pump the water to a water tank, water reservoir high above the ground for a suitable height. From their height it will be rotating the turbines underground and thus generating hydroelectricity. This hydroelectricity will then be stored in a power plant and later processing it for providing electricity to the street lights and thus cycling on the street. Here, again the process water from the water turbine will again be pumped for into the water treatment plant, the solving the thus purifying and filtration and providing water into the pond for commercial uses for agricultural sector or any other household activity or any other sector that requires water. So this is all our model is. Thank you. Namaste to everyone. Today we are here to present our give a presentation of our project, the kitchen version. So let's start with our introduction. As we all know, kitchen plays a really vital role and is very important in every household. But it also offers a potential of a big crisis or an accident, which might occur because of a simple gas leakage, simple LPG gas leakage. And throughout the time, we have confronted many of the cases. And we have also heard many of the news about gas leakage and about catching fire because of simple gas and LPG gas leakage and all. And truly, truly centuries, all the technology has developed really, really big bounds, but still there is no economical or uh, system that is available in the market which can prevent from all this happening. We have also really brought out some records on the internet about the rate of fire that happened because of the LPG gas leakage and all. Now moving on, I would like to say that this the problem of LPG gas leakage and the catching fire because of LPG gas leakage has brought up a really big amount of problem in every household. And to prevent it, there is no such a system that is available in the market in affordable price. So keeping all these problems and then we came up with an idea, we came up with a system and we call it the kitchen version. The materials which are used to make this system are as follows Arduino Uno, CM800 ACSM module, MQ5 gas sensor, this, that plays a very important role in the system. Some starbo motors, breadboard, jumper wires, one channel relay, AC fan, buzzer, and a SIM card. Moving on, I would like to give you a brief explanation of the materials that we use. So, at first, is Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno is nothing but a simple microcontroller which contains a mega 3PDP chip. Actually, we can program this board microcontroller in such a way that it works on its own, and using this, we can program it however we like to work however we want. Now, next up, So here we have the MQ5 sensor. This is the main sensor of our system. The MQ5 sensor specializes in detecting flammable gases, for example, methane, ethane, and LPG gases, etc. So MQ5 sensor has a uh, filament made up of tin oxide. Tin oxide has a very uh, unique character. It becomes, it has a very high resistance when it's exposed to oxygen. But when the flammable gas is exposed in the environment, the conductivity of the filament uh, increases drastically. So that's how 
the amplifier sensor works. We also use the same 800 HGS module uh, for the connection between the system and the owner. This uses the cellular network of the uh, entire continent. Uh, we can uh, thus increasing the connectivity uh, drastically. So this is how we uh, transmit the message of the gas leak uh, from the house to the owner using devices like phone and etc. So this is the circuit. So now I start with the slide. So we read this diagram. So as we know, we have used survey we know, an amplifier sensor, a buzzer, a GSM module, an exhaust fan, and also a servo. We have used many servo motors, approximately three. So how it works? This is the we can call this the brain of the system, and this is the amplifier sensor. When the amplifier sensor senses the gas, which it is used to sense like to the computer and all, it's already explained. When it senses the gas, and we have also put up a threshold number, threshold uh, number which above which the normal level of the gas is not uh, is not very well. Therefore, when it uh, exceeds the normal level, the threshold level of the gas, it sends a signal to the arduino, you know, and arduino you know, activates the buzzer, which will turn on the buzzer and also sends a signal to the GSM board and the exhaust fan turn on, turns on, which will take up all the gas from the room and also message to the servo motor, which will open up the fans of the room and also checks if the regulator is turned off or on. So here, so this is our brain of the computer, brain of the computer system, that's the Arduino Uno and here is the MP5 sensor, that's the main sensor of our system. Here is the GSM module, which we use to connect to the cellular network and here are some of the motors that we use so uh, so let's me let me demonstrate the first condition what if uh, the user opens the regulator and he goes out and he forgets about the regulator so what will happen in this condition this condition uh, in this condition our system will play a very important role the system will turn off the regulator if it's on if the after the system is turned on so let's see how it works so when I plug the connection the system turns on and the regulator turns off automatically this is how this is the first precautionary measure taken by our system so uh, so now let me uh, but what if the gas is leaked more even after this if the gas is leaking now the main procedure, the main procedure will function if if the gas level increases the threshold frequency that we said that's as per we say it's 400. So the first thing we did it will do is turn on the uh, turn on the exhaust fan and it will also turn on the uh, vents that's connected to the motor and this is how it functions. So and there is one more can be one more function to it. It will also send the uh, call to the owner as alerting the owner about the gas leakage in his home, and he will also it will also send a message in the phone of the owner. So now let me put some gas. This this is lighted and it ha it contains butane in it. So what if I expose the system to the butane? As you can see the buzzer ring, the fan turns on and the vents are open. So now, here you can see, there is a visual alert. So, after that, we can even see there is a, there are some of the, there are some readings that are here about the gas level, det gas level detected. This is how it functions. And even after this, uh, there is even one more key feature to it. Now I will tell you to summarize the key features of our system. So the connectivity is established to the cellular network. Already he has explained how the network works. So the GSM connects to the cellular network with the owner's phone. So when the gas level exceeds the threshold number, then automatically a 
call is sent to the owner and also uh, message is sent to the owner. So it is a connectivity which is established with the cellular network and uh, because it process. So our model already has explained or model takes precautionary actions like taking out the gas from the kitchen using the exhaust fan, opening the vents using the servo motors and also checking the regulator using the servo motor and also now uh, in the test step the procedural prevention and alert system in this what happens our GSM module sends messages and a call to the owner so it also informs about the gas leakage which will also help the owner to know about the future steps he should take about the gas leakage and but still the model also prevents it from any further issues which might occur because of the gas leakage by taking out the gas and all. So this is how all our, uh, our, our project and the system works. So in conclusion, I would like to say that our system is actually based on very, uh, very simple mechanisms and using Arduino and C++ using Arduino mode and C++ language, we have programmed all this and we have used simple sensors and all. Now I think that we can develop in future we can develop it more not only just uh, keeping it like this, we can also develop it in such a way that it will, if in case, in case if a fire is caught, then it will automatically call the fire agency and also sense its location so that they can take the further steps. And after that, we think we would like to develop it more further. And in conclusion, we can say that this is very economical. And so, in the market, if it is brought out in the market, every house household can purchase it. And if that happens, then I think a huge number will be impacted in the cases of fire or when LPG is cases in future. Now I would like to conclude by saying all this. Thank you. Thank you. I am Jamia Vikya Upadhyay and I am Pratyan Sajjali and our topic is bioregulation. So to remove or to remediate something is like uh, improving a bad condition and bioremediation means uh, decreasing pollution with the use of microbes. In Assam, there are many oil refineries which cause large scale of oil spills. So, reduce, so to reduce these cases, uh, we can enhance bioremediation in our states. Um, it is of three types, uh, microremediation, phytoremediation and bacterial bioremediation. We are going to talk about bacterial bioremediation. But in short, by microremediation includes the use of fungus, phytoremediation includes the use of plants, and bacterial remediation includes, includes the use of small microorganisms. Um, let me explain you what happens. Uh, this is an oil refinery. Uh, oil comes through the pipes and sometimes the pipe gets leaked. So it will affect the normal grazing land. So we can put some microbes that will uh, release some enzymes like polylactic acid and starch sugar. This will break the oil hydrocarbons into simpler forms and the bacteria can then uh, digest the oil hydrocarbons easily which will reduce the pollution. Now, it has two methods. One is ex situ and in situ. Ex situ uh, means uh, we will extract the pollutants from one place to another and treat them. And in situ means we will put on microorganisms in the place of pollutant. There are several techniques to enhance this process. Number one is bio-augmentation. In this process, we use some extra microorganisms to speed up the biodegradation process. And the second process is biostimulation. In this process, we use some extra nutrients in the soil to enhance the effect of microorganisms on the pollutants. Now, let's talk about some advantages of bio -remediation. Bioremediation is a natural and totally eco-friendly process because it causes no effect in the agricultural field and it is way more cheaper than the other cleanup methods because it requires no extra machines and labor work.